Morena Koto. It actually um, feels a bit overwhelming uh, to be here, if I'm completely honest. Um, I did not want to travel uh, to get on the stage today. Uh, in the lead up to this amazing event, um, Christchurch felt um, as distant to me as New York, uh, which is quite extravagant. Um, but since Cyclone Gabriel, um, I felt uncomfortable leaving my family and my colleagues back home in Gisborne. My relationship with rain has changed. And uh, despite having worked right at the heart of the climate challenge uh, for the last five years, you would have thought I was prepared for a climate disaster, but I've actually been really surprised how much it has rocked my world. I came today because this event is too important, especially this year, which is why I also have notes. This room is filled with the leaders of agriculture in New Zealand and abroad, here you have the decision makers and the big thinkers who can power up a regenerative food system. You are the action takers and the influential investors that can make sure this happens fast. I don't think it's overplaying it to say that you all directly influence the future of our rural communities. For land use across New Zealand, for protection of our indigenous biodiversity, and our ecosystem resilience as we face in, to more warming and extreme weather. This feels like our most critical year yet. The demand for your leadership and your innovation uh, in the face of this adversity has just gone next level. I'm here to t let you know. I hope you're all feeling well and alert because right now, this year, election year, we're making some collective decisions about what sort of country we're gonna be as we face into the climate crisis and it intensifies. I'm one of three co-founders of the Toha Project. I'm part of a network uh, that is growing payments to frontline climate action and to nature-based solutions, well beyond the scope of the current ETS, involuntary carbon market, to help New Zealand meet our 2030 targets, um, but also to make sure that we meet our export market expectations as well. I needed to be here today because I need to make a request. On behalf of our team working um, on the East Coast, I actually need to ask for your help. But first I should do the introduction. Um, ko Nati Hikaro te iwi, ko Turanganui a Kiwa te kainga, ko Natalie Whitaker Aho. I'm a technology designer. I build community markets. Our teams create things like give a little, Trees that count, calm the farm, the generator, that sort of thing. Yet despite my love of the technology and its potential to cool the planet, I mostly feel obligated to let you know that when a big climate disaster arrives for you and your whanau, it won't be the technology that helps you at all. It will be your community. And right now, I want to make a really big plea for my community. Five years ago, I went deep on what was blocking pace and scale for climate solutions, and my quest for hope led me from Auckland to a move out east. I'm not originally from Tairawhiti, and I definitely don't speak for the region, but I believe in its people and the whenua, and I feel privileged to call it home. It's more than just being the first place to, call the, uh, to, to see the sun each day. The people there are magic, in one of the most isolated parts of our country, nobody is there by accident or just passing through. You actually have to want to be there. And that means trust in the community has depth and complexity that you just can't manufacture anywhere else. For this reason, I believe the coast holds the clues about how New Zealand can, pro New Zealand can prosper uh, and face climate action with real pace. Because really, Gizzy is to New Zealand what New Zealand is to the rest of the world. The connection is not necessary, but it's very valuable if we can get the protocols right. Every primary industry is represented in the region, though I can um, count the dairy farms on one hand. It feels like a place where regeneration is actually possible. And personally, I figure that if the East Coast can't nail a just transition with all of the history of New Zealand's dual heritage, 
starting from that coastline, then I'm unsure whether there's any hope for any other region in New Zealand to do the same. But it's fair to say that over the last four years that Toha has been out in the R&D on the East Coast, the environmental challenges have been intensifying, weather event after weather event. The morning after Cyclone Gabriel, we knew that we were dealing with something much, much bigger. We gathered at the office and we decided to make the Toha system operational and public via a service we called the East Coast Exchange. We started accounting for all of the action that was taking place across the community on a public record and using data to verify the needs and distributing resources around the community. We're actually just a bunch of tech geeks, but we got all of this underway with post-it notes and clipboards. While the power and the comms was out, and the roads were blocked off, and the gas stations were rationing, and the banks were choppering in cash to ATMs with hundreds of people lining up. Now, Toha is not an emergency response charity. We're a climate data cooperative. But we swung into gear because we wanted to help protect something precious. For the first couple of days after the cyclone, the welfare centres in Marae didn't have any fresh food. We raced around trying to do a stock take. There were plenty of pellets of pot noodle and lots of toilet paper, thanks to COVID. Um, but our biggest concern was that the with food running out and no running um, drinking water and no petrol coming into the region, that the community would actually start to panic. We wanted to do our best to remind the community of the incredible abundance in the local food system despite the fact that the majority of the produce actually leaves to go offshore. We wanted to protect the trust that was embedded right in the foundation of East Coast communities for many, many generations. So we set to work negotiating fresh produce out of cool stores and transporting it to all the different welfare centres in Marae, recording all of the value on an IOU system so that the community knew what was going on and what was needed and that payments could flow later. If you zoom out of the initial response, fundamentally, we launched the East Coast Exchange because our work in Give a Little had told us and taught us many, many hard lessons around disaster. Generosity is quick to flow, but those with the big resources, they're much slower to get going. And they have trouble, when they do, connecting to the real needs on the front line, especially in isolated communities. That sluggishness quickly turns into resentment, and a breakdown in trust, which is critical to maintain when everything is actually so under, under so much extreme pressure. Toha set about creating a public record of action across the community so that people could just get on with helping each other, knowing that the funding and resourcing might flow a little bit later if the work and effort was going to be recognised. Now that we're several months on, we're experiencing another hard reality. Public attention for the, the crisis wanes, and volunteer efforts are simply just not enough to sustain the level of work. It requires, you know, out east we require large-scale restoration of nature. To get real about the challenge that we're facing, uh, not just out on the east coast, we want every farmer and landowner in New Zealand to be paid for the environmental work regenerating nature. We want all landowners and all farmers to own their own data about the whenua and have all control over the benefit and the value that that data generates. When extreme weather hits, when you physically stand in front of the damaged whenua, when you're surrounded by hills with beautiful fertile soil that is slipping into the sea, and when you turn up to your local food market, farmer's market, and it's filled with damaged crops, you realise straight away that it's actually our food system that is in dire risk for climate change. And quickly you work out that it's going to be our farmers and our landowners that are going to be the heroes in our future. More events like Cyclone Gabriel are coming, which is why we need Hawke's Bay and Tairawhiti to have an exponential recovery. We need it to bring forward a demonstration of the nature-based economy that we need, where we can achieve a mosaic of different land uses. It's a tricky and complex puzzle to achieve this, but failure is not an option, which is why I need to segue 
back to the help part of this. I want to extend a big open invitation to all of you to join us to make the East Coast Exchange fly. The impact that we could create together goes much, much further than Hawke's Bay and Tairawhiti if we get it right. And there are so many ways for you and your organisation to get involved. We can't build resilience into our food system with nature-based solutions if we're not prepared to pay the people getting their hands dirty in the actual nature bit. We need cyclone recovery funding to keep flowing, direct to farmers and landowners, and we need to start growing a green workforce for that restoration work. For Toha, this really is the bottom line. We must pay for the work to recover our food production and the ecosystems that support it. If you know of resources or funding that should get straight to farmers and landowners right now following the cyclone, please help us close the gap between the funds that are available on the East Coast Exchange and the ability for us to get those to farmers and to landowners who are working on the whenua. Even just signing up to the East Coast Exchange is helpful because it means that there are eyes over the gap that is, um, you know, I guess, between what has been raised and the funds that are with the front line now. If you're part of an organisation with net zero targets, you may have farmers or rural contractors in your scope three emissions. At Toha, we're concerned that the cost of the transition is just going to be pushed down to the small players through scope three pressures. In a world of flood and droughts, this is the end of the value chain that can really afford the pressure the least. The legendary organisations of our future are actually going to work out how to take Scope 3 and turn it into a massive opportunity for generosity and for loyalty and for resilience right across your supply chain. Let us know if you want to work together on that. We're working with some amazing partners on just this issue. Perhaps you're part of an org that has a really hard to abate emissions problem in your 2030 plan, requiring a supply of carbon credits. We can put some of your future carbon credit budget to work now, securing access to really high quality local supply of carbon credits kick-started through the cyclone recovery. The funds can go to work straight away, helping to scale up native reforestation and natural reversion all along the East Coast. Um, the team are waiting for your call. But we're also going to go beyond carbon too. With a group of partners, we're now designing different biodiversity financial instruments to be able to help recovery, particularly uh, sustaining the redeployment of the workforce from exotic forestry to natives. We can nail this, but we are going to, you know, hopefully create some great wins for some Kiwi food producers. And it will be amazing to be able to claim at the end of this that we can produce nature positive food in New Zealand, but that's not the case right now. This challenge is just so much bigger than just biodiversity credits. This is the data about nature and our relationship with it, and we're going to need it right throughout the supply chain. Please get in touch with us to prove the skeptics wrong. Please help us prove that business, corporates, are prepared to pay for biodiversity. Finally, if you have innovations or ideas, no matter how big or small, to build resilience on the land or to transition land use, if you want to test these ideas out, please just get on the road and please bring your R&D budget with you. Our team will work to match you up with local innovators for pilots and new research opportunities. You may have some interesting data that will help Hawke's Bay and Gisborne make um, some really important decisions right now. Please share that data through us. Toha has mechanisms to make sure that you see value from your IP and from your data. At very least, you're going to receive an invite to come celebrate with us a year post the cyclone in February next year, because he does a good party. To wrap, working together, for the producers of Hawke's Bay and Gisborne will help us keep moving faster than the politics this year. We don't need to wait for the election. Wellington doesn't really set the pace. And 2030 is coming up really, really fast. We can't afford another big breakdown in trust between urban New Zealand and rural communities. With the impacts of climate change, 
being felt firsthand right across New Zealand. Every politician, it doesn't matter from the Greens right through to ACT, they all have an obligation to start evolving the climate conversation into a bipartisan approach because it's going to be hard enough as it is without needing to go back to the drawing board every three years. New Zealand can't be distracted by divisive climate policy when the actual reality is that our international trading partners are bringing the greatest pressure on our transition. In Toha, we believe that unlocking climate action is really just a cooperation challenge, which means New Zealand could be in contention for a medal finish if climate change were the Olympics. After all, this land is pretty isolated at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. We've always needed to rely on each other. Cooperation is in our national DNA. We just need to start running in the race, guys. I really truly believe that if we're able to support Hawke's Bay with the innovation and the East Coast with the resources to express Tenoranga Tiratanga, that these communities will pay us back, pay it forward many times over as climate change creates needs in our community and for us all in the path ahead. Thanks.